Hey guys, I've uh, been experimenting with electricity, obviously, and uh, the electromagnetic forces. And just considering the human body and the electromagnetic force that we give off, thinking about things like the electromagnetic consciousness theories and just how we can take advantage of the EMF fields of our body for new purposes. So I put together a series of experiments using this uh, uh, electromagnetic wave detector. So, if you stick this near a your power outlet, you know, you're gonna get a reading off of it. And then if you stick it up against the lights, you know, you get different kind of reading. So, uh, you needed a uh, EMF source, basically, that would uh, emit electromagnetic force. Um, so that I could, you know, test what's going on as it, um, you know, passes up to and through the body and so on. So I picked a plasma ball. So plasma balls are pretty commonly available. You can get them in these kind of uh, party gift store type places. And essentially what they are is um, a kind of a self-grounding Tesla coil, essentially. Um, but if you want to think about it in another way, um, you could just think of the original name given to the plasma ball by Tesla, of course, who also invented it. Uh, and he called it the inert gas discharge tube. Uh, and so essentially it's basically, a, it's kind of like an open air transformer uh, and a current oscillator that produces an elec uh, electricity discharge. Uh, and when it passes the bulb that contains the neon and argon gas, the neon and argon gas um, are electrically excited and they illuminate. So you can see the kind of, basically, uh, you can see the electrical forces manifesting visually inside of a plasma ball. So that's the first test that I'm doing here, you can see I have placed the electromagnetic frequency detector uh, and the EMF source. It's a little bit far, uh, you know, about a six inch distance from one another, and I put my hand in the middle just to see if uh, my hand would be uh, interfering with the electromagnetic frequency uh, as it went from the source to the uh, measurement. And the results were pretty conclusive. So what I decided to do is uh, just use a bunch of other materials, you know, test a bunch of other materials to see if uh, something else would have a very similar uh, effect on the frequency. You know, some things might absorb or block or interfere at EMF frequency more than others, naturally. And yet, to some degree, you can see the results here uh, that definitely uh, you did have an interruption of the signal with other materials. But interestingly enough, the my body was uh, a lot more of a disturbance to the EMF um, field, uh, or I guess emission, than um, some of these other some of these other materials. So just to make sure that I um, wasn't grounding out um, so that that's where all of the force was being uh, transferred to, it was just basically the easiest path. Um, you know, I sat on my uh, exercise ball, which I always do when I'm in the studio, so it uh, was a happy, happy thing that it was there so that um, you can make sure that the forces weren't just simply getting transferred to ground. Okay, so after determining that um, putting my hand in between the field affected it, I wanted to see, you know, is the signal actually being carried over my body? So, you know, and how much of that signal is being carried over my body? So I, you know, put my hand on the plasma balls, you can see here, and um, just measured, uh, got, a, got a reading off of the um, EMF detector as I held it in my other hand. Um, so when I placed it close to the... Um, plasma ball and then when I placed it further away from the plasma ball I got almost the exact same reading um, but I had fully extended my arms you can see so that to me indicated that uh, indeed my body was a vehicle sort of a transducer of the EMF signal uh, coming off the plasma Make sure that <clears throat> you know it wasn't some sort of a electrical effect based on the fact that I was touching these things like I was touching the plasma ball and I was touching the um, EMF detector so I wanted to see if the field would sort of travel through without me touching either. So I uh, extended my body, you know, still sitting up on the uh, exercise ball, uh, so that I was not touching the plasma ball, but I just hovered my hand around it. 
and then you know I would stick my toes out uh, and my hands out uh, towards the detector which was as far as I could stretch the limbs of my body and uh, again there was uh, it definitely did pick up a signal it wasn't quite as strong but <clears throat> it did pick up um, uh, the e the EMF signal which otherwise would not have been wouldn't wouldn't have showed up on the um, detector I also figured out that um, you can use these uh, little plasma plates um, so a plasma plate is essentially the same thing as a plasma ball it's just that it's made into a flat surface and they use slightly different materials on the inside but if you hold it really close to or in the vicinity of uh, the emission source you can actually kind of gauge exactly how the emission source is being projected uh, based on the patterns that come up on uh, the sort of flat screen of the Okay, so this next part's really fun. Um, so I was basically, uh, you know, working with a plasma ball, and I figured, okay, I want to listen to some tunes. So I went to reach out, um, you know, to the 3.5 millimeter audio jack that's hooked up to my amplifier, which I normally plug into my laptop so I can hear, you know, sounds. And when I reached out to it, you can hear this. So I thought maybe, you know, so I was getting shocked or something, but after I figured out I wasn't, uh, you know, nothing dangerous was happening, uh, basically I discovered that uh, the audio signal that was generated off of just my fingers touching the um, audio jack uh, and the reaction that my body was emitting was an indication of the frequency that my body was experiencing. <laughs> Uh, so what I think is being uncovered here is that you can use uh, this little trick, this little audio amplifier hack, to uh, determine the frequency and the amplitude of an electromagnetic uh, emission uh, that your body is expressing. <laughs> And so if you're absorbing a very uh, high level of EMF uh, force, which is being radiated by you know, something like a plasma ball or whatever else, uh, you can determine what it is that your body is undergoing in terms of its EMF experience by measuring the result of this little um, sort of uh, detection audio hack thing. Okay, so probably the most interesting part of this experimentation was I was trying to figure out, well, could I, can I feel the electromagnetic force? Can, I, can it cause some sort of sensation that I can recognize? And, you know, while this part of the experiment's not as conclusive, um, what I did find, when I put two plasma balls uh, next to one another, so it's kind of amplifying uh, the signal, and I did verify that it was amplifying the signal, not, say, for example, just grounding each other's signal out or one absorbing the other or something to that effect. Um, so you amplify the signal and you put your hand in between these two plasma balls and you can feel something. Like it feels like maybe a warm tingling sensation in the hand. I can't say it's conclusive as to what's happening because the sensation does go away after maybe it's you know my hands electrical field neutralizing with that of the field being expressed by the two plasma balls or maybe it's like the little hairs on my hand that are standing up and then they don't stand up anymore after they've you know af uh, you know after that sensation has occurred something um, something which I can't exactly determine but I can assure you that for the first few moments I could actually feel experience this field uh, difference. <clears throat> and so I think that's really interesting because maybe we could, you know, ultimately sculpt with electromagnetic fields um, causing, you know, interesting different sensations uh, in, our, in our perceptive apparatus one way or another.
ultimately it would be interesting to tap into the body's uh, electromagnetic field. So we know that the body produces an electromagnetic field and we know that you can sort of tap into your nervous system with things like TENS machines to cause your muscles to uh, convulse. So, you know, what I think this, where, where this could go is if we could irradiate the body with um, electromag electromagnetic energy and then take the result out, you know, using some of these kind of measurement techniques, whatever, it's quick hacks, uh, then maybe we can figure out what's happening in terms of our net electrical effect on that field before it comes out of our uh, body. And we could use that, you know, for some sort of useful interactive electronic art application. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, yeah, there's all the fun you can have with EMF.